So in this lecture, we will understand how we can use async and await in C sharp instead of using asynchronous calls from delegates that we have seen in my previous lectures. So this is not a detailed lecture on async and await keywords. It's just how we can use these keywords to avoid the asynchronous calls from delegates, which is a lengthy process. So we will quickly jump onto our example what we used in my previous lecture and quickly go through the code right so i have explained this code in my previous lecture in a very detailed way i had a class which uh, had a method and i simulated this as a long running task and then i used to call this method with the help of a delegate which is defined in here and i used the both ways uh, invoke which called the method as in a synchronous manner and then the begin invoke was used to call the uh, this method in a asynchronous way so let's try to run this example first and let's see how it, how does it behave right so it's says going to call the method asynchronously and now my control is back to main method so control has come back here and then after 10 seconds it says delegate has finished and the result is hello.net school so this is what we have simulated in here and i am getting hello plus whatever i have passed onto the string now, if you have any doubt, please go to my previous lecture and watch that lecture, right? So, what I'm going to do is basically I am going to eliminate this lengthy callback method. Uh, so, first I need to use the begin invoke method and that it uh, required a callback method which I have defined in here. So, what we are uh, trying to do is basically we are eliminating the use of delegate begin invoke method and this callback method with the help of async and await keywords. So, that's our target okay so let's quickly jump on to the async and await example so i have pre-coded this example here and this is the same class what i had in my previous async uh, delegates example so the, those two classes are same so this is async delegates it had a it has a my class and says my method which uh, is a long running task and it says uh, hello plus whatever the string is passed similar i have a method which is my method the only change what i have done in here is basically i have used this async keyword and await keyword okay so i will explain you this task and task.run in a short while but just uh, look at here i have uh, removed the callback method also right so i have removed the callback method i don't need this callback method and also i have commented out the code which was responsible for calling the delegate and i have also commented the delegate part okay so the code is exactly the same what we had in asynchronous calls using delegates lecture. The only difference is I have comment out, commented out the delegate part, the calling of the delegate part and the callback method. So let's go to the async task my method again. Now what I have done is basically I have changed the return type of my method which, which was a string uh, return type for the asynchronous calls from delegates. I have changed that method to a task of string right so the this is the only difference uh, in this method is methods written type so instead of returning a string it returns a task of a string now what is a task what is async what is await what is task dot run these topics will be covered in my future lectures but right now i'm just trying to achieve the functionality what we had in the previous lecture with a simpler uh, construct okay so what I'm doing here is basically my return type is being uh, replaced with a with a task and then I have a async uh, keyword attached with this method. Now what this async keyword uh, specifies is basically it specifies that my method will run in a asynchronous way and then I am using the await keyword with the, uh, in connection with the async keyword. So let's go to the English meaning of the await keyword first. What, did, what does it say? It says wait for in event. So this is exactly what our await keyword does here. It basically waits for the task to be finished and then it gives us the result which will be stored in the str variable. Okay. And what I'm doing here with this uh, chunk of code is basically I am running this piece of code as a different task. Okay. So this piece of code will run as a different task and result will be awaited for the task to finish. And after the task is finished, the result will get to the str variable and then my method will return this str variable okay so let's revise again what we are doing is basically i have this method and i have uh, changed the return type of this method as a task 
I have uh, ha uh, I have used the async and await keywords and I am running this piece of code as a different task okay let's try to run this code and see what happens right and if this uh, behaves in a similar way let's see okay so it says going to call the method asynchronously now my control is back to main method just as we had in asynchronous calls using delegates and then after 10 seconds we'll get a a response that is hello.net school it says example async and await so let's see what we have passed in here so i have passed .net school example async and await so my result is hello.net school example async and await right and the rest of the code is very similar uh, to my previous example it says now my control is back to main method i say uh, whatever the result is back in my variable i uh, print it using t.result and then I say control uh, console dot read line. So my code is running in a exactly the similar fashion as we we were using the uh, callback methods using delegates. But that method was a uh, longer process, right? This is a very simple process. Just we used to have the async and await keywords and a, a written type of task, right? Now let's see a couple of interesting things. Let's see if what what happens if we remove this async keyword. So Whenever I remove this async keyword, I will get a error here. Now I will see what this error is. It says the await operator can only be used with an async method. So whenever you are using await keyword, you need to uh, specify that method as async uh, asynchronous method. So that we do with the help of async keyword. Okay. And then let's see what happens if we remove this written type as task, right? So if I remove this written type as task and make it as a normal written type, my method will get an error here and says the written type of an async method must be void task task of t or i async enumerable or enumerator okay so for now don't get confused because of these uh, lengthy topics uh, just try to uh, remember two points the written type of an async method must be a void and a task right and that's what we are doing here so i am saying task now different examples using async and await we can see in my uh, in my further lectures okay also if you are not understanding what is this this is an anonymous method which i have already explained in my one of my previous lectures right so this method has no name i am just uh, directly passing the piece of code on to the uh, curly braces and that acts as an anonymous method so i hope this video is useful for you in this video we understood how can we use async and await keywords to avoid the lengthy process of uh, using callbacks using delegates okay so whenever you you want to use uh, your method to run as in a asynchronous manner you can use async and await keywords so let's catch these topics in a very detailed manner in uh, in the future videos uh, until then goodbye and thank you so much for watching